In this video, we're looking at problem 1225, where we're, we're uh, <coughs> calculate, calculating book value, liquidation value, and looking at the price to earnings uh, methods of doing it. Now, this is a pretty involved problem, so to save time, I've gone ahead and put the numbers in beforehand, so, so you don't have to painfully watch me put all these in. So, if you look here, you know, once again, the shaded areas are the formulas. So you're going to see this, right? All these open areas right here. Now, this box over here is, I'm not sure I've used these in uh, formulas. This is just sort of, I'm not actually sure. I have to, have to go check that, what I've actually used here. But fill these in. Fill these in. Uh, I know, for, for example, the actual market value to total assets, Sets and total liabilities here, what the numbers that are used in the formulas are these two right down here. That's that's how we're getting our uh, our uh, liquidation value per share. But if I think if you go ahead and fill these in, I'll probably use some of these. Uh, but you just have to to look and see where. Uh, because there's so many uh, form formulas in here, and, and I, I'm not going to take the video time to bore you with going over every one of them. Just understand that the the important thing here is is to is to understand the uh, difference between the book uh, value uh, per share and the uh, liquidation uh, value per share. So I'll let you read that. And you can see when we go uh, through this that your book value per share, which is $38, is going to be less, uh, a lot less than the liquidation value per share. And the key here is uh, if we look at the uh, difference between the market value of uh, total assets and the market value of total liabilities, which is what we're using to uh, calculate right here, our liquidation value per share, we're simply taking the difference here and dividing by uh, I32, which is common shares outstanding right here, okay? So that's going to be higher because here, book value per share right here, we've taken C39, which is the actual book value, which comes from the actual total assets right here and total liabilities current right here, see, which are much lower than what they would actually sell for in the market. Now, these numbers, these big numbers, of 50 million and 20 million, which are given to you in the problem right down here in part F, you know, in a real life scenario, these would be very uh, difficult numbers to uh, calculate because you'd have to make a lot of uh, a lot of assumptions on what uh, the actual market value of these are. So this is uh, kind of over uh, simplified, but the point here is to just uh, show you the uh, difference between the book value and the liquidation value. And the other thing is. Um, we're going to see, make sure I point, uh, point it out to you something here. Uh, well, just make sure that you know that you just, as you put these uh, numbers in, you know, don't just copy them from the uh, video. Make sure that you're uh, clear on where in the, 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 the problem they're coming from. For, uh, for example, net income is right here in part C, and that's where you you'd put that right here. Uh, and I believe that's going to be used. This is I-33. Yeah, that's going to be used uh, in, one of, in one of the formulas. So you just click through here and see where we use I-33, uh, I-34, right here. In the earnings, right, that's what I want to do, go over. Earnings per share is just simply, um, so we see the formula up here, I-33. 33 divided by I32, and that is simply, if we go over, um, let's see, I th is, is going to be uh, common shares outstanding divided, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, net income, yeah, 30, 33 of net income divided by common shares outstanding, and that's going to give us earnings per share, and that's what we're going to use 
to calculate our stock price per share, which is simply earnings per share times I-34, which is uh, price to earnings, let me make sure I get that right, right, price to earnings ratio, right? So that's that. That's how we got this earnings per share right here. I thirty. Let me make sure I said, said that right. Uh, I mean, stock price. I should say stock price per share is based on earnings per share times your thirty-four price to earnings ratio, which is given to you in the problem. Um, somewhere. I know it is. I'll find it. Let's see. Right here in part D. Okay. Which is once again, this is an over a simplified a problem because this number, this ratio would be very difficult to calculate in real life. They're just giving it to you here to make things uh, simple. Now, the only other thing you might have a problem with is part E. Uh, would you infer, what would you infer about the company's total asset shown on the balance sheet when comparing this calculated stock price with the a company's book value per share and that's simply comparing those two and you can see here <clears throat> that this, the stock uh, price that we calculated right here is much higher than the book value so we can say that this is a going concern or, or, or this company should continue to operate because the stock price is higher than the actual book uh, value. Okay, I believe that's all I'm going to say about problem 12 uh, 25. Just make sure I, I just, you know, I just want you guys to take your time and you know, make sure you, you know where all these uh, numbers are uh, coming from and take some time to look at these uh, formulas and see what's actually happening here, okay? Because, you know, you can just uh, look at uh, where these uh, numbers uh, up, up here, you know, are actually coming from, okay? All right, that's problem 1225.